Yes, sir, I'm Robert George. I'm the water resource monitoring technician. And I'm, well, employed through the Cloud Forest Project but I'm stationed at Connect, working with Connect. The St. Helena Cloud Forest Project is made up of a wide range of people, both local and international, all working in partnership towards expanding and restoring the native habitat of the Peaks National Park for the island's water security, wildlife and people. Today, we are joining Robert George to see what a typical day is like for the project's water resource monitoring technician. So, previously at one of the monitoring locations I have, a data lugger went out of service. So that was the diver data lugger. And with those, once the battery's full depleted, that's it, they're, they're no longer usable. But these are all level scouts from a previous project. So I'm just gonna recondition this one and uh, deploy in its place. With a bag full of tools and equipment, including the reconditioned data logger, Robert heads out to his first field visit of the day. So my day-to-day -day job is uh, the monitoring of our water resources. So that is what we're getting coming in. So that is our rainfall and mist capture. And also monitoring where it goes through the streams and groundwater and what comes out. So that's the basis of it. And then there are a lot of steps in between to get that information. Fishers Valley is one of the locations for monitoring stream flows. The water flow in this valley originated on the peaks. All right, so that data lugger that I repaired earlier, I'm gonna deploy in here to monitor the water levels here. But you can see that this rope right from the cows, also where that has been deteriorated. So I'm gonna use a new, a new cord. Today's task for Robert is to retrieve the data logger instrument from inside the borehole, download the information that it has been recording, and to carry out routine maintenance of the site. A new cable and new data logger is then installed and everything is calibrated. The visit to Fisher's Valley is complete. Next is a maintenance stop at Harper's. Connect St. Helena have a total of four reservoirs located in this valley, making it one of the most strategic locations for the delivery of the island's water supply. The V-notch weir that needs checking today is further up the valley, which means a short hike through the trees and bushes to get to it. So this is a HANA, HANA multimeter. So what it does is it records your in-situ water quality so you can check your water temperature, the conductivity or the, the EC. Time is 12.02. Location is half as we. Same as what we did previously at the borehole. What we tend to do is we do a manual dip. So we then do from the top of the water level to the top of the V. So what I'm doing is start loading some monitoring data. So retrieving session, continue. So just by logging out the data, you can see at some point the state light actually got washed out because of the heavy flows we've been having.
But what I'll now do is relaunch this and have it start so that all the data luggers within this network in James Valley, they'll all start at the same time. So it's set for four o'clock this afternoon. As the day rolls on, there's a sudden change in weather. The early sunshine has been replaced by big grey clouds and rain. Robert is heading up to Kaysen's to visit a monitoring site for rain and mist capture. What I'm going to do here is just remove the, the rain gauge from here and just mount it so it's on the side of the post. That way it's a lot easier to actually get into it and get the uh, data lugger out. So when I first started doing this job, there's like very gradual steps. So what I was doing was like the process I was doing earlier, downloading the data, getting the measurements, and then afterwards realizing why you're doing it. And then come the end of the year, we were doing the, uh, the full data set, then you can actually get the full picture of why you're doing it and how it's all important. Especially like doing everything, making sure that everything is accurate. It's always like to do anyway, but it just reinforces that. And then based on doing all of this work, myself and uh, partners within the water polar, we made this uh, recommendation to operate the structures and then having telemetry system which will make the job easier for me. Make the job easier, but also make it more, uh, what can I say? Consistent, less data gaps. And it's just good to see, see it all moving in the right direction. It's all good thanks to the Cloud Forest project. A borehole in French's gut is the final site visit of the day. And the weather has now really deteriorated. Although this part of the island is well known for wet and misty conditions such as being experienced today. Working outdoors in this part of the island, the machete is an essential piece of equipment for moving around. Once again, the data logger is retrieved and a month's worth of information about water flows in this area are downloaded. As we can see, a typical workday for the water resource monitoring technician covers a lot of tasks in a range of locations across the island. So, does Robert enjoy his job? Yeah, I do. It is, it is a good mixture for me because it's both uh, like, you know, office work, it's like a, you know, office table work, but then it was also out in the field, so it doesn't shock you to the one thing. So, and it challenges you both, like, you know, intellectually, but also problem-solving skills. So a lot of times you'll find things tend to go wrong, but then you have to figure out why, how can you improve it. Technically, it'll keep you occupied, but also, there's a variety of things I do, so it doesn't get very like uh, boring or repetitive. So that's also a good thing. And it's also evolving too. So now we have like smaller projects coming up. So like we're incorporating basically vapor transpiration. We're going to monitor that, so we get new equipment in. So that's going to be like new stuff for the island, but new for myself also, new skills learning. <laughs> 